In previous lessons, we learned how to determine cell potentials under standard conditions. While this is important to know, it is somewhat limiting since many interesting systems do not have standard conditions. Batteries rarely involve standard conditions, and biological systems do not have standard conditions either. As a result, we need a way to determine cell potentials under non-standard conditions. This cell potential under non-standard conditions is represented by just E subscript cell. Since cell potentials are related to free energy change, and free energy change is dependent on the ratio of the products to reactant concentrations, it should be clear that cell potentials are also dependent on the ratio of product to reactant concentrations. We see this in the Nernst equation, which indicates that the cell potential is equal to the standard cell potential minus RT over NF multiplied by the natural log of the reaction quotient Q. However, since R and F are constants, as long as we're at 25 degrees Celsius, we can write a simpler version of the Nernst equation, which is the cell potential is equal to the standard cell potential minus 0 0.0592 divided by N multiplied by the log of the reaction quotient. When there are more reactants relative to products, such as before the reaction has taken place, we find that the reaction quotient Q is less than 1, and that in these situations, the cell potential is greater than the standard cell potential. This is the situation when a battery is fully charged. However, as the reactants are consumed to produce products, Q eventually becomes greater than 1, and in these situations, the cell potential eventually becomes less than the standard cell potential. As the reaction continues, eventually Q will be less than the equilibrium constant K, which indicates it will still have a spontaneous process and the overall cell potential will still be positive. However, once the system reaches equilibrium, then the reaction quotient will equal the equilibrium constant, and in these situations, at equilibrium, the cell potential will equal zero. This is what happens when we say a battery is dead. In this problem, we're asked to calculate the cell potential for an electrochemical cell that's described by the cell notation below. We're given the reduction potentials for the two half reactions, and we're also given the concentrations of the gases and the aqueous ions in the cell notation. To begin this problem, we'll want to use the cell notation to write a balanced redox equation. In this case, we recall from cell notation that the oxidation or anode half reaction is on the left and the cathode or reduction half reaction is on the right. When we do this, we would end up with hydrogen gas reacts with copper two plus ions to produce two hydrogen ions and copper solid. Now that we have a balanced redox reaction, we can identify the number of moles of electrons transferred in this balanced redox reaction. It should be clear from the copper ions being reduced to copper metal that we have two electrons transferred. Next, we recognize that the hydrogen ion concentration and the copper ion concentrations are not equal to one, so therefore we are not at standard conditions, which indicates we'll need to use the Nernst equation. In this case, the problem indicates that we're at 25 degrees Celsius, or 298 Kelvin, so we can use the simplified version of the Nernst equation. In identifying the cell potential from the Nernst equation, we need to calculate the value of the reaction quotient Q. The expression for this would be the square of the concentration of the hydrogen ion divided by the concentration of the hydrogen, which is also divided by the concentration of the copper two plus ions. When we do this calculation, we find that the reaction quotient has a value of 0 0.209. The Nernst equation also requires that we have a standard cell potential. We're given the reduction half potentials for both of the half reactions, so when we plug these into our equation for the standard cell potential, we get a standard cell potential of plus 0 0.34 volts. We're now ready to plug in all the values into this simplified Nernst equation. When we do this, we find that given these concentrations as indicated in the cell notation, the cell potential has a value of plus 0.36 volts. After watching this video, 
you should be able to describe the relationship between the reaction quotient and the cell potential. You should also be able to use the Nernst equation to calculate the cell potential under non-standard conditions.